The woodwind family includes those wind instruments, sometimes called aerophones, in which the air within a hollow tube is set in motion by a vibrating reed, or, in the case of the flute and piccolo, by air blown against the edge of a hole in the side of the instrument. Modern models of these instruments may be made of wood, metal, plastic, or other materials, and thus the wood in the family name has become a bit of a misnomer. These instruments have a wide range of timbres, offering some of the more diverse colors in the arranger's palette. They are also, for the most part, instruments of more intimate character than the brass and percussion families, including some of the more interesting solo colors in an ensemble. The wide diversity of tone color can create problems of blend within the section, but these problems can be solved by careful selection of instrument and register. The range chart from Gary Wright's Instrumental Arranging book shows the written ranges of the instruments. In this chart, tied whole notes are the college and professional ranges that you should expect. Barred half notes are what high school players would be able to do. Barred eighth notes, junior high, and barred sixteenth notes, elementary. As with all charts of this nature, they represent averages. Some ensembles will be better, some not so good. But for the purposes of this class, use the ranges appropriate for the ensembles you are writing for. The piccolo is a transposing instrument. The flute is not. The piccolo is written an octave below its sounding pitch to avoid extreme ledger lines. The primary register division on the flute occurs between C sharp 2 and D2, with the fundamental producing the pitches in the lower register and the second partial producing those immediately above. A noticeable change in tone occurs at this point in the range, with the lower register being darker in color than the upper register. The piccolo is extremely weak in its lower register. The instrument is most used in the middle and upper register where its tone is silvery to brilliant. The flutes, including the piccolo, are flexible and agile instruments capable of playing nearly any melody. However, because the flutist expends a great amount of air in producing the tone, occasions to breathe must be provided at regular intervals. Additionally, there are a few trills and tremolos that are very difficult or impossible to play on the flute. Harmonics are possible on pitches above C2. The sound of the harmonic is thinner than the normal flute tone and is generally used as a special effect for single tones. A small circle is placed above the note to be played as a harmonic. You should notate the pitch that you want to hear. The performer will finger a note an octave or more below the notated pitch and overblow to play the written harmonic. Rapid articulation is possible on the flutes because of their ability to double and triple tone. For more information and examples, I encourage you to use Instrument Studies for Eyes and Ears, developed by Don Freund at Indiana University. You can find this at the end of this presentation. The range chart from Gary Wright's Instrumental Arranging book shows the written ranges of the instruments. In this chart, tied whole notes are the college and professional ranges that you should expect. Barred half notes are what high school players would be able to do. Barred eighth notes, junior high, and barred sixteenth notes, elementary. As with all charts of this nature, they represent averages. Some ensembles will be better, some not so good. But for the purposes of this class, use the ranges appropriate for the ensembles you are writing for. The oboe is another C instrument and therefore does not transpose. The English horn transposes down a perfect fifth. The lower register of the oboe presents the greatest problems for the arranger. The tone is very strong and somewhat difficult to control. It tends to dominate in a woodwind ensemble texture. From D1 to G1, the tone becomes much more manageable and the next register, from G1 to G sharp 2, is the most characteristic. 
In the extreme upper register, the tone becomes successively thinner and more piercing, and the technique more and more difficult. The oboe is quite flexible, if somewhat less agile than the flute. Most trills are possible, except for the half-step trill on the low A sharp. For more information and examples, I encourage you to use Instrument Studies for Eyes and Ears, developed by Don Freund at Indiana University. You can find this at the end of this presentation. The range chart from Gary Wright's Instrumental Arranging book shows the written ranges of the instruments. In this chart, tied whole notes are the college and professional ranges that you should expect. Barred half notes are what high school players would be able to do. Barred eighth notes, junior high, and barred sixteenth notes, elementary. As with all charts of this nature, they represent averages. Some ensembles will be better, some not so good. But for the purposes of this class, use the ranges appropriate for the ensembles you are writing for. The clarinet family includes only transposing instruments. They transpose to E flat, B flat, and A. Some transpose up, some transpose down, and without a notation software program, this becomes difficult for young arrangers and composers. The so-called throat register of the clarinets, written F sharp 1 to B flat 1, is their weakest register. The tone is thinner and somewhat indistinct. That's in sharp contrast with the tones immediately above this register, which are clear and penetrating. These differences can be minimized, but not entirely eliminated, even by expert clarinetists. An important technical limitation for arrangers and composers of music for younger ensembles is crossing the register break that is from B flat 1 to B1 requires a major adjustment in fingering. This poses problems particularly for less experienced players. You should avoid repeated crossing of this register break when writing for younger players. For more information and examples I encourage you to use Instrument Studies for Eyes and Ears developed by Don Freund at Indiana University. You can find this at the end of this presentation. The range chart from Gary Wright's Instrumental Arranging book shows the written ranges of the instruments. In this chart, tied whole notes are the college and professional ranges that you should expect. Barred half notes are what high school players would be able to do. Barred eighth notes, junior high, and barred sixteenth notes, elementary. As with all charts of this nature, they represent averages. Some ensembles will be better, some not so good. But for the purposes of this class, use the ranges appropriate for the ensembles you are writing for. All saxophones transpose down. The soprano and tenor are both B-flat, with the tenor adding an octave down. The alto and baritone are both E-flat, with the baritone adding an octave down. The saxophones are the strongest sounding instruments of the woodwind family. Their tone nearly balances that of the brass instruments, and they are often used in conjunction with brass. There is a tendency for the saxophones to predominate when used with other woodwinds. The lower part of the saxophone's range, below written E1, is somewhat coarse and difficult to control, particularly at soft dynamic levels. In the altissimo register, above F3, there is a general loss of agility, which makes trills, tremolos, and rapid melodic passages very difficult to produce. However, these also make good special effects for expert players. For more information and examples, I encourage you to use Instrument Studies for Eyes and Ears, developed by Don Freund at Indiana University. You can find this at the end of this presentation. The range chart from Gary Wright's Instrumental Arranging book shows the written ranges of the instruments. In this chart, tied whole notes 
are the college and professional ranges that you should expect. Barred half notes are what high school players would be able to do. Barred eighth notes, junior high, and barred sixteenth notes, elementary. As with all charts of this nature, they represent averages. Some ensembles will be better, some not so good. But for the purposes of this class, use the ranges appropriate for the ensembles you are writing for. Neither the bassoon nor contrabassoon are transposing instruments, but the contrabassoon is written an octave above its sounding pitch to avoid extensive ledger lines. Additionally, the bassoon uses the tenor clef for its upper register for the same reasons. The dynamic range of the bassoon is somewhat more restricted than that of other woodwind instruments, which may tend to make the instrument predominate in soft passages and be subordinated in extremely loud passages. The complicated fingering system of the bassoon in the lower and upper registers causes difficulty for younger players, and the instrument is generally less agile in those areas. You should consult a fingering chart before writing trills and tremolos in the upper or lower register. For more information and examples, I encourage you to use Instrument Studies for Eyes and Ears, developed by Don Freund at Indiana University. You can find this at the end of this presentation. I include here three works that represent excellent woodwind writing. If you click on the box, you will see especially important places where the woodwinds play a significant and crucial part. Additionally, I provide a link to Don Freund's Instrument Studies for Eyes and Ears. Now, relax, pick one of the pieces, and just enjoy the music, but listen specifically for what the woodwinds are doing throughout.